What's going on, guys? It's Brian Jack with Superman's Comics. New week, so we got some new market trends for you. That's right, we got that three up, three down. We're coming with three up trends and three down trends, and we're not wasting any time. We're getting into it right now, starting with the three up. Jack, we got Black Adam. We had that DC fandom. Now we got some Black Adam news plus a bunch of other stuff, but there's a lot of attention going on with Black Adam right now. Yeah, people like to give DC Comics a hard time, but DC showed the entire internet comic community how one of these virtual cons is truly done. DC fandom was a really a great event, well done, well produced, and definitely had a lot of information out there. And one of the most exciting things was a collaboration between Dwayne The Rock Johnson, Jim Lee, and digital artist Boss Logic to put together kind of like a pseudo trailer, um, almost a, a digital rendering to give you an idea of what the upcoming Black Adam film would look like. And this has everyone excited. And we've talked about Black Adam on this program as well as several other programs. This is definitely a highly investable property. This is going to be a big, big hit. You've got an A-list star, I mean, the biggest movie star in the world, combining with a character who has that kind of like um, badass... I'm a villain, but I'm not really because you can kind of also understand my perspective and point of view. Um, so he kind of fits into that anti-hero role that seems to be the, uh, the, the most marketable in today's, today's kind of culture. And on top of it, we, we got introduced to all of the side characters that are going to be within this story. And when we say side characters, it's almost disrespectful because, of course, we're talking about the Justice Society of America. We're going to get Adam Smasher. We're going to get Cyclone. Um, we're going to get Hawkman and we're going to get Dr. Fate. And that is exciting. So you've seen a lot of back issues um, spike all over the market as people are kind of reacting to what is now kind of more concrete confirmed news. Yeah, a lot of people going picking up Hawkman and all types of books. But nonetheless, we've also talked about some great Black Adam back issues on this channel, especially within the top 10 back issues. But keeping with that DC fandom, the next one we're going to talk about it's not Batman, although that was a hell of a trailer. I did enjoy that. But the next thing is, is we got Suicide Squad. And this looks like one that I actually want to see, not the Ghostbuster remake from the first Suicide Squad yeah. movie. Yeah, Suicide Squad definitely had people excited. James Gunn's um, iteration of kind of um, the Ostrander, you know, kind of like 70s, 80s style classic uh, Suicide Squad. So people are excited about this one. Now, I would caution everyone that th with such a large cast and <laughs> you kill some people off. Yeah, the premise of the, the, the movie in general, you're definitely going to see a lot of characters die. Uh, like one example is I haven't seen a solid scene yet or a, a, a really a moment or had it, seen an interview where Pete Davidson did any sort of like significant talking. Um, and that makes me believe he, he may not be long for the, this world in that movie. Um, but either way, what was significant about this weekend, Brian, as it relates to Suicide Squad, is the fact that there was a lot of speculation about these characters, who they were playing based on set photos, certainly. Um, there was a section in the Key Collector app that had a lot of back issues spiking, but not all of those um, assumptions that were made within the app, within the market, were correct. There were a few roles, um, namely the role Idris Alba was playing, um, which a lot of people were thinking was vigilante. And that has Superman number four from 1987 spiking. Um, so, you know, you, 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 we now have confirmation of who these actors are playing, who is in this movie, the scope of this movie, the style of this movie. Um, and this has people excited. So there's a lot of back issues to go chase. Um, everything from, like we said, Pete Davidson to John Cena to Idris Alba and everything in between. Yeah, I did like the little trailer they put together basically with all showing all the characters. But also within Suicide Squad, we know there's a new video game. And we would be remiss if we didn't bring up being wrestling fans that we're getting Samoa Joe as the voice of King Shark in that video game, right? Right, and he's incredible. He also uh, voiced the Transformers animated series. And what's amazing is if you're familiar with Samoa Joe from a wrestling ring, you really can't recognize his voice in any of the animated stuff that he does. I think he really has a career in that. <laughs> the voice box or something. <laughs> I don't know how he does that. He was also Phineas and Phineas and Ferb. I'm just I kidding. <laughs> I was going to say, I was going to say, I didn't know that. <laughs> The last one for the three-up portion is, this is one that 
kind of amazes me. We, we wonder all the time because we're seeing these yeah. books that are going for so much money, but we're seeing steady modern growth right now. A lot of great characters. There's a putting a lot of that kind of that uh, shot in the arm for comic books that was kind of lagging with the COVID. We got through that COVID comics started flowing again into the store shelves and then now it's picked up and you're seeing what punchline dylan just to name a few but there's steady modern growth within comics right now yeah so these are my favorite picks whether we're talking up picks or down picks um and i know that sometimes you guys out in the market you guys want specific books right you want specific titles that are going up or going down but my favorite is these kind of macro looks at the market as a whole and when we look at the market specifically the modern market which i know a lot of um, investors and collectors tend to be down on, right? They tend to view it as more of a risky play, more of a waste of money, more of a, a fluid market, and, and quite often it is. Um, but it is strong right now, Brian. It is solid. And those, some of those characters you mentioned, you know, you talk about Punchline, Dylan, Null, Black Winter, um, Strange Academy, um, any of these kind of newer characters that we have seen pop up within the last couple of years uh, that each of them, as they kind of entered the market, we, we were, you know, there was some trepidation, right? You know, it, we've all been through the, the Weapon H's, right? The new character who everybody's hot on, and then the next thing you know, no one really cares. Um, but prices just keep escalating. Uh, you know, you look at something like Punchline, and the way that Punchline is growing in value is very similar to a blue chip first appearance. Um, it's not gaining exponentially month to month it's it's gaining kind of at a solid slow growth rate um which really indicates that the market has kind of spoken and they're behind these characters i really i look at a character like punchline i look at a character like dylan i look at a character um you know like no and i don't i really don't see backtracking on these characters I mean, these characters may be here to stay which then makes their current pricing you have to kind of reevaluate it, right? You, you, I think previously it'd be very easy for people, especially people like Brian and myself, um, you know, you know, mid thirties to early forties. Um, we've been in the collecting and speculating game for a long time. We've seen it, we've done it. Um, and we tend to be jaded to these things. So a guy like Brian or myself, we're, we're more apt to look at the current punchline prices, for instance, and say, that's insane. I would never touch it. But, yeah, it's starting to get to the point where the market has the kind of belief in these characters that it's really reminiscent of maybe Miles Morales or Spider Gwen or some of the previous incarnation of really a list kind of next generation superstars. Uh, you know, X twenty three is another one that comes to mind, and I really think that we have kind of like this new crop of characters coming up now, Brian. Where I think these prices may just be the tip of the iceberg of what we're going to see over the next coming years, because if the growth remains um, steady on a lot of these characters, the way they are now, and as long as the publishing side keeps putting out stories featuring these characters, uh, I think we're going to see solid growth across the board. Right. And you bring it up and I'm, I'm glad you said early forties, but uh, I, I look back and I've talked about books from when I was a kid with Killing Joke or, you know, the Batman 428. And there might have been people in early 40s then going, I'd never pay that much for a book. So take it now, take those prices, add inflation, carry the one. Boop, 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 boop. Nope, still wouldn't pay that much for them right now. But to each his own. And that's why we say buy what you like. And with that, we're moving right over into that three down portion where we're we often say sometimes there's some good buying opportunities in here, but the first one we're talking about the three down is DC late prints. Now we're talking yeah. these are down and we've been talking about how late prints have been hot, but why are DC late prints down? Well, we got to talk about this because I'm confused. So this is one of our favorite topics to bag on, on the three up, three down is DC late prints because of what you just said. If you were to look at the comic market as a whole right now, specifically the back issue market. Um, and again, I really believe that the publishers need to look harder at the back issue market because the back issue market, specifically the modern back issue market, can really help determine what's going to be successful on the current publishing end. And if I was a publisher right now, I would be paying attention to the rampant sales, sales of the second, third, fourth, fifth prints with this unique cover art, whether it's independent titles like Something Scaling the Children, or let's be honest, every damn Marvel late print that existed in the last few years is on fire. Um, and why you would see that and not react to that. We've been calling for DC Comics to change their late prints now for over a year. Um, 
so many key issues that have come out from Punchline to Batman Who Laughs. And now we have this week, the Robin King, whose first appearance is the late printings that you just get these recolored covers. So the point that I know that DC has potential to get this right is the fact that this past week on FOC, there was the solicit for Deceased Dead Planet number one, the fourth print, which featured a brand new Peach Momoko cover art um, adorning the cover. And it really shows the potential that DC does understand the, the kind of need and desire to get new cover art, specifically with a popular cover artist, and to put it on a book like that where you can kind of spike sales. I would imagine there are going to be more sales of that fourth print than there were of the previous third print. Um, and I, I just think that could that be the start of DC getting this right? I don't know. You know, that that certainly was solicited after this coming this week where we're getting the Dark Knight's Death Metal um, one shot with the uh, Legend of the Dark Knight, which f first uh, appeared, uh, Robin King. But if this would have been a unique cover art, imagine if you'd have gotten, Brian, some popular cover artist with a Robin King uh, cover or just a an interior panel featuring Robin King. If we would have gotten that on the cover of this book, this could have been a, a serious collectible over the next couple of years and a book that probably would have sold three times as many copies at distributor level, which is truly what the publisher cares about. So DC Comics, again, we've been telling you guys for a couple of years. I don't know if you're listening, but you got to get it together with these late prints. I hope that that Momoko cover is the start. Yeah, I imagine Dark Knight's Death Metal number one reprint with like, Wonder Woman and the freaking chainsaw, that, that panel there is the cover. That would have been pretty mm -hmm. cool. But we're going to move on to the next one, and we're talking about those Marvel ratio errors. Well, and, and specifically one in particular. Um, you know, we didn't talk about it last week with the Venom 27 fiasco. Uh, but, man, we're involved in the exclusive variant business. And this, to me, is like a nightmare. Big-time collectibles created an exclusive variant for uh, Venom 27, and it was a John Boy Myers cover. It had, you know, two covers, uh, you know, an unmasked and a masked version, and, and it featured that John Boy Myers laser eye that's also featured on our uh, We Only Find Them When They're Dead exclusive variant available right now from SimplementsComics.com and the 616comics.com. Um, three cover set right now for $79.99 lowest printed cover in that set is limited to just 100 copies that will be the lowest printed version of we only find them when they're dead in existence do not sleep on that that book is going to be major from al ewing but they create this exclusive variant they're all excited about it the book gets ready to ship and they're not getting their variant or at least all of the stock of their variant and then the one in 100 incentives ship to stores featuring a double cover with the one in 100 incentive cover on the inside and on the outside, they've got the big time collectibles exclusive variant John Boy cover on the outside. Now, of course, Marvel says return these books. Now, that's very difficult as retailers are seeing $500 sales on eBay. Um, and suddenly, you know, these things started hitting the market. Even the owner of big time collectibles, um, I saw a live stream with him where he said he went and bought his own his own variant uh, just for nostalgia's sake to have one of these errors. But man, what a mess. Uh, it, it, it really kind of messes up the, uh, the one in 100 variant. It messes up the, the big time collectibles variant. Um, I hope Marvel takes care of that shop and, and, and does them right. At the same point, it created a very unique collectible that may be chased long-term um, or may just be a footnote. These, these recalled uh, error variant um, type things, uh, they, they're tricky. They're very hard to pr project. But at the same point, this has got to be on the downturn because we know firsthand that when you're when you're producing one of these Marvel exclusives, you know you're talking this store in particular. You know you're talking about a two cover, a two cover allotment of around forty five hundred books. Um, you, you're talking well over ten thousand dollars in production costs. And uh, to have that end up uh, get messed up because Marvel makes a printing error, it would be incredibly nerve wracking. Uh, shout out to Big Time Collectibles. They seem to have handled it very, very well. Um, I think us over at Simplements Comics and the 616, we'd be having a heart attack. Right. I mean, 
people like pictures, right? Sometimes they see pictures and they, they don't read behind the picture of the information that's in it. They like to see the cover. So who knows, they might see a, this cover going for how much ever money, don't know what's behind it and go, hey, I know this big time collectibles has this cover. I'm gonna go over there and order a bunch of them. Yeah. They might've improved big time collectible sale. People thinking they were buying something because they saw it was hot, didn't realize it was an error cover or double cover. And, <laughs> or vice versa, you get the same thing we talk about with facsimile editions where people are selling this book, whether on, on purpose or not, selling right. it for so much money on eBay, thinking that, hey, I've seen it hot, so I'm selling it. You never know, just stuff that makes comics crazy. <laughs> But we're going to move into the next one on the three down. We're talking seven secrets. This one's kind of weird because we've been talking about how great this book is, but it's kind of been, I would say overshadowed. Boom keeps setting the bar higher. Seven secrets came out. Then we only find them when they're dead came out and that outsold that pre-sale. We know Berserker is going to do the same. It's getting lost in the shuffle, but we have issue number two coming out as well. Right, Jack? Right. This is why we wanted to highlight this book. Um, it's easy to sit here and say, well, you guys did exclusives for this book, so, so you like this book. Well, spoiler alert, yeah. We don't do exclusives for the book we don't like. Yeah, we did exclusives for this book, and not only did we do it an exclusive, we then went and liked the book so much that we did two second print exclusives, all available at simplemanscomics.com. And it was the type of thing where um, this was not a short-term play for us. We don't make short-term plays. This was a long-term play for us. We believe in this book. Boom believes in this book. This is a book that has television show or feature film written all over it. Um, and, it and it really is a story that can play to today's culture. A little bit of anime, um, you know, a lead character, a young, almost child, person of color. This is definitely uh, a, a, a kind of, uh, mystery. Uh, it's got a little bit of superhero element to it. It's got a little bit of everything, right? Really, it's in its excellent written story thus far through two issues. But yeah, you hit the nail on the head. This has simply been overlooked because of publishing schedule. This book comes out, um, and they, immediately behind it, you've got the Al Ewing release. Um, the market seemingly had to make a decision between seven secrets and we only find them when they're dead on top of it i think boom supported we only find them when they're dead a little bit more because there was higher ratio variant for we only find them when they're dead than there was for seven secrets which that's a good indicator of how much like a publisher is really trying to incentivize stores to order more so there was only a one in 25 for um seven secrets with we only find them when they're dead there's a one in 50 and it's jenny frizzen and i think that's helped drive sales there's been more exclusives for that and then you mentioned berserker coming with keanu reeves and matt kent that's i mean that's going to even blow we only find them when they're dead out of the water but this is exactly what happened with something's killing the children you know with once in future and folklords and each release got bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and more talked about but what happened on the back issue market brian we saw something's killing the children dry up more and more and more because the reader buzz was legit. Well, let this be our warning to the Simple Men's Comics community. Seven Secrets is a serious book. If you haven't read it, just buy one copy and check it out and read. Um, I think if you read the first two copies, the first two issues, you're going to be hooked on the series. But regardless of that, um, we also say another benefit of reading, aside from all of the obvious things that your mom taught you about reading when you were growing up, is reading can help you with your investing, with your with your collecting. And if you read this book, I think you're going to see the value in this book that we see in this book. And the fact that it's on the down portion, the fact that it's being overlooked, I just see amazing opportunity. And I remember back to the time at, that we were sitting here just a week or two after the release of Something's Killing the Children, right? And everybody was telling us that our FOC show, our brand new last call show, which is now a staple um, in the YouTube comic community was killing that book. Uh, and we were told how many copies were sitting on the shelves and how easy it was to find something's killing the children first prints. They were just everywhere, right? They're everywhere. Um, this is, it's, it's no big deal. It's, that book's not worth anything. Um, and now that book is an $80 book. So um, I'm not saying this is going to for sure be 80, but you know, there, there are patterns. Things are cyclical in the comic uh, market. Uh, this is one to pay attention to because 
It's like my man Brian likes to say, it's a lottery ticket. You can do, because you can get these for cover price, um, because there are some exclusives that are available that are extremely low printed um, that, that you can get your hands on by your favorite cover artists. Um, and these are available out there on the market still when a lot of other releases would be sold out. Um, I think this is a great buying opportunity. Yeah, and just like you said, we did an exclusive variant because we like the book, just like we did one for We Only Found Them When They're We Only Find Them When They're Dead. And you can damn well be sure that we have two kick-ass books for Berserker from a little artist known Raza, but we can't show them to you quite yet. But with that being said, guys, also comment down below if you've picked up Seven Secrets. Let us know what you think about it. Everyone we know that's read it has enjoyed it. So let us know, because if you don't like it, we'd like to hear that as well. But there's the three up, three down for you this week. Let us know what you guys think is hot. Let us know what you guys think is cold. And with that being said, this is Brian Jack with Some Men's Comics. We'll see you guys in the next video. Bill, I'm in the mood for a switch up. I hit the function, hit the rose till I hiccup. I hit the stage and leave with money that's a sticker. She picture perfect, so I told him I'm a flicker.